everybody, my name is Mark Greisinger, president of Net Diligence. I'm here on site in Philadelphia at our annual uh, Cyber Risk Conference, and I'm here talking with my good friend Anthony Mangaluzzo, who is president or CEO at PCS. And we're just going to have a conversation about all kind of cyber risk related stuff. Uh, Anthony, it's awesome seeing you. Uh, you know, every time I come here, we were talking about how great it is just hanging out with friends. Uh, we're sitting in a room that was literally the size of our first conference some 12 or 13 years ago. And now we're up to about 1,400 attendees. So it's been a very fun week, the last day of the week. Let's have a conversation, man. Yeah, I got to tell you, this was a great conference. You know, I'm so happy I met you four years ago. And, you know, Net D, literally, you know, four times a year, we're going around, you know, all over the country. And it, it feels like a family. Like, it's, it's really something special. It's a community. It's totally a community. It's family. Um, me and my colleague Dave Chatfield is here. We feel like you're not even working. You're no. We're having, we're having meetings with friends, but they are clients. Um, but the cool thing about it is I feel like every time I come to my own conferences and I listen to the guys, I learn something from each session, literally. Because you and I both know it changes. The world of cyber changes so much, you know, every month. And the crazy thing is, speaking of that, I mean, talking to everyone here, it's not a great thing that everyone's getting hacked, but everyone is busy. There's a lot of business, there's a lot of partnerships going on. and. It's just, it's, it's, it's scary, but it's also great to see there's so many good people out there, you know, really helping to fight this. Yeah, so one of the topics you and I both are, are, are on the same uh, page on is breach preparedness. Yes. It's, a, it's an important topic for the cyber insurance world, the cyber community, the underwriters absolutely uh, care if their policyholders have some cyber readiness in place. And that means a lot of things. Um, we have a product that helps there, but what drew me to you originally is you help your customers with the aftermath. You know, the guys, the ransomware events happening, the panic, the bridge coach lawyers, the forensic guys come in and help triage that initially. But then there's a whole slew of chaos afterwards that where you guys come in and help stand things up and yeah, I mean, we, we love to say post breach remediation and um, you never want to see us, right? But if you have a bad heart, you, you want to see your heart surging. You necessarily don't want the surgery, but you got to get better. And um, those incidents when you're there, they come fast, they come furious. It's planes, trains, automobiles, and you don't have a lot of time to think. You know, the company is down. The data is encrypted so um but like you said having is it getting better or worse though i think it's getting worse it? i mean i've never seen us as a company so busy and the level of sophistication of the attacks is it's it's really insane and you know these ai programs like uh, chat gpt and things like that are actually making the hackers stronger smarter because they can generate code and they can do different things faster if you had so uh one of the things we try to promote for good cyber readiness hygiene is under breach preparedness is having an actual plan, an actionable plan that you can get to Saturday night when something bad goes wrong. You know, here's your experts who are going to get on the phone with your team right away, calm the customer down and start an action plan. Um, but go what goes along with having a plan is having the right experts in place. That includes you have to call your, your broker, we believe, to let them know this thing is happening. We need the resources that our, our cyber insurance partners can bring in. Those resources include top breach coach lawyers, forensic experts, and then of course the remediation experts like you guys. We believe those guys all need to be in, a, in the actual plan that the customer can get to, even from a mobile app at a moment's notice. We think, and our belief is in talking to customers, that helps give them a better outcome in the long run. Um, I know though, there's still a lot of challenges out there. What are if you had to pick, say, one or two challenges in this in, in the whole life cycle of a breach from start to finish, where are you seeing the hiccups? Is it backups? I mean, what are... all sorts of things. Like you look at some of these Fortune fives and Fortune ones, and how are you running your technology? But I'll, I'll give you one for your software, right? So you talk to the people. They're breached. They're panic. Hey, do you have a uh, a continuity plan or do you have a recovery plan? Yes, we do. Uh, where's it at? It's encrypted by the hackers. It's on my network. So that's why your software is so special. At least they had one, though. <laughs> they had one. And who knows, maybe they'll fit a little bit. They just want to feel like they had one. But, you know, that's why your software is so important because it's off the network, right? You know, I can't tell you how many times these threat negotiators are dealing with the hackers and they'll say, hey, you know, we've got a million dollars for you. And they're like, 
No, your insurance policy was only your network drive. Uh, you, have a, you, have, you have a ten million dollar deductible. And you know what? We'll take all ten million. Yeah. So I mean, it's just certain things, and you know, no one wants to be in that situation, right? But if they use your software, if they have their technical people in place, and they have a plan, they'll be much better off. Yeah. Are you seeing like what would be? Let's just talk SMEs because we yeah. see a lot of our. We just came out of our new annual cyber claim study that we do with all the. The insurance industry, we collect a lot of lost data. I think we just collected 3,000 new claims for 2023. And once again, everything's ticking upwards. Yep. Um, I think next year, though, we could see some interesting things because I think the underwriters are putting in requirements now. If you want to keep your cyber insurance, you must have this, this, and this. I, I've been saying that. It's funny. Three or four years ago, we were trying to tell our clients, you need two-factor authentication. You need next-gen AV. No one bought anything. Literally, like they just thought we're trying to blow up the bill and, you know, hey, put more stuff on, make more money. Well, now it's kind of funny. Those same clients we've become order takers for, not salespeople. Hey, do you have this? I need this to get covered. Like one thing I can tell you about PCS is we've had no breaches. We have every possible checkbox. We do double you VP. Have no, no personal breaches. No personal <laughs> breaches. So, okay. but the crazy part is our cyber insurance, right? Again, with every box checked, MFA, next gen AV, threat protection, you name it, $16,000 to $37,000 for less coverage. And what I can tell you is, you know, we're a bit of a larger company, but the smaller companies are even taking it worse. One of the uh, smaller companies that I'm a uh, partner in, we went from $7,000 to $72,000 in coverage. Well, look, I mean, uh, we. We support a lot of the broker community too, not just cyber underwriters. We support about 150 cyber insurance companies, but also the cyber brokers who sell the cyber coverage. And you know, some of the challenges is getting that customer renewed. Just because you have insurance now doesn't mean you're gonna to continue to have insurance. And especially if you're looking at requirements now, you have to have multi-factor authentication. Let's just say you have to have endpoint protection or cloud backups. Um, a, a good chunk of those customers are, are bare, are uninsured. And what they're, now their challenge is even, even greater because not only do not have coverage, they might not have ex the access to experts who their insurance company stands behind. And that's then they're really panicked. So. Well, the other crazy thing is if you go back to like 2015, if you look at your cyber insurance policy, it was basically a rider. It was two pages. Now, if you go through your cyber application, it's seven or eight pages. So in 2015, the question would be, do you have a backup? So, yeah, I got it on my thumb drive. I got a backup. And technically, you're telling the truth, right? A backup is a copy of your data. Now, it says, do you have a backup? Yes. Then the drop down comes this long. Okay, is it three, two, one? Is it immutable? Is it cloud? Is it off site? Like, so they've gotten really smart and the apps are really tuned in. And the other thing is where people, I think, really make a big mistake. We'll try to fudge the answers a little bit. The insurance companies aren't taking it anymore. Like you, if you're checking that box, you better be ready to show your hands. Well, especially because there's precedent where if you say you're doing something and then let's just say you have a loss and they find out afterwards that you actually did not have multi-factor authentication, please, they could decline coverage at that point. So, yeah, I mean, you, you definitely. Let's talk a little bit about, um, I know you guys assist in the, again, the post remediation and that could take weeks, months. We have one of the, the key uh, data points in our in our cyber claim study was business interruption. Yes, actually increased for an SME. I want to say this year the average is like 1.2 million dollars. That's for the average company size in our claim study was about 90 million in revenue. That's a super significant loss. It could last, and that's because they're out for weeks. I have to tell you though, we have some small companies that we do this. You know, we talk about, we all like to talk about the big stuff, right? The Fortune Fives and that, but a lot of 50 to 75 person companies, if you look at the ransomware, just the, uh, the bounty, we'll call it, between all the fees and services, it's a million dollars. If you don't have this coverage, you're out of business. Yeah. Um, so let's also, I know you guys get into things beyond just um, post remediation. 
what are the, some of the proactive things? Any 24 seven monitoring? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so it's uh, EDR, you know, making sure those endpoints are protected. It's monitoring. Um, for all our managed service clients, we have a thing we call PTP, a PCS threat protection. So we've actually combined some databases and algorithms to try to see if someone's getting hit with ransomware. So for instance, let's say an unauthorized or an authorized user starts encrypting data we have honeypots set up on the network that will instantly lock that person out. So it's really that, but the other thing, which is so important too, it's the constant training. You know, right now, over 50% of all these breaches are phishing. Yeah. And we all laugh, right? The Nigerian prints and all that. Yeah. Well, guess what? There's someone in your company that's clicking it. That. Yeah, that's why they still work. Um, on the, you mentioned the endpoint EDR. Are you guys able to help the customer watch it 24-7? Yes, we have, we have, I was like to say, butts on seats 24-7 <laughs> because that's the world that we live in. And even as a company, as we're hiring, I mean, we have folks internationally now and we're constantly trying to follow the sun. Yeah. And um, well, the I, hackers I, don't sleep. I want to have to revisit with you on that because uh, we, of course, know you guys. We have you guys in our eRisk Hub portal, which is a repository of key experts. I always thought, think of you guys as post breach, but I, you know, realizing more you're doing proactive, I want to definitely circle back to you. I'm a big believer, as is Dave Chatfield, my colleague here, in uh, having someone watch our endpoints. We're an SME ourselves. I don't want, we don't have the bandwidth to be watching all, the, all this endpoint alerts. I want someone peace of mind knowing the expert is there doing that. And I think in a few years, we could see underwriters actually ask it, not just do you have endpoint protection in place? Do you have someone 24-7 watching it? Right, who's your, who's your CISO, right? Is it in-house, is it outsourced? It's funny you say that. So, you know, when we came into here uh, four years ago, it was all about post-breach remediation. But now, you know, making so many friends, making so many relationships, it's like, our core business is actually an MSP. Like, our job is to make sure that you don't get here, right? Yeah. So this is actually the first conference that we really pushed our managed services because not that we don't want to make light of the post breach yeah. remediation, but I think people here know us enough. And it's like, wait, you could do all this other stuff. Like, you just don't fix us when we're damaged. <laughs> and um, so that was a lot of the meetings and a lot of the uh, things we talked about. So it was, it, was, it was fun. It was almost like we changed up our game a little bit. That's nice. Well, the last topic, let's talk. I want, you mentioned immutable backups. Do you guys do anything in that area? Yes, a lot. I mean, you know, there's so much data with different clients. I mean, nowadays, terabytes you're talking about, right? Yeah. And if you're holding that data, so yeah, we have a bunch of different solutions, um, you know, a lot of different partners, depending on budgets and needs and things like that. And um, it's something we, we go on the mountaintop and scream about, so. Well, and to this point, so if you're the threat actors, we, our understanding is their MO is they go after the backups first, if they're on their own network, especially you're, you're doubly screwed, right? Oh, we, we had an engagement where it was a uh, jewelry shop, they called us up, and the guy actually was backing up his data to his house through a VPN. Well, he tried to bluff the hackers and said, oh, I'm not paying you. I they got said, backups. Go, Guess what? They said, yeah, go check it. They <laughs> encrypted. They actually went oh, to the, through the network to the uh, gentleman's home. And uh, yeah, they got his backup. Got and that's really why you need the immutable, because a lot of times when you're breached, you're not breached when you think you're breached. You were breached six months ago. Yeah. They're watching your emails. They're setting up rules on your Office 365. You know, they're gonna email your CFO just when you get on that plane to wire some money. Well, they're very sophisticated. So now you're dumping into, yeah, the, the, we talked about ransomware. The, the, the equal co-brother to that as far as leading losses that our insurance partners are seeing our business email compromise, yes. which is essentially wire fraud. You know, it turns into the ACH and wire fraud issues. That's not going away. Never. Um, and I don't. I know we can dive right into that, but I just wanted to pause there and, and, and say thank you so much. Man. Nice. A for being a friend, but also an expert. And it's just fun being here in Philadelphia. Yeah, and I appreciate you. And for those folks that are not here, you need to come to the next net day. That's right. I mean, <laughs> and get guess what? Get your ticket because obviously it was it a, sells out in hours. It, it was it was a sellout. Yeah. So we, we get our sponsorships in the year before, so we're always locked and loaded. Heather loves you. So that's great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers.